Hello and welcome back to the pork. I'm Gab Major and this is Amateur Ports. Amateur Ports is your gameplay submissions with my commentary and today we have a submission from IK Saxman who is playing in the German Tier 6 Premium Destroyer Z35. Now this is a Tier 5 and 6 game of Domination on Trap. On the enemy team we have a Benson, a Legazania, a Pensacola, a York, a Bayern, a Queen Elizabeth in the division with New Mexico, a California and another New Mexico. So on the enemy team, um, only one destroyer, so that means there's only one sh potential destroyer we have to be concerned about. It's a Benson, so it will have worse detectability, but a very high DPM, uh, so potentially could be a bit dangerous if we end up in a situation where she can see us as we can see her and she can kind of pile on the pain. And I guess it kind of depends on how much your team and the enemy team support their associated destroyers. Also worth mentioning the enemy York, the tier 6 tech tree German cruiser, due to her aggressive sonar, or that long reach sonar that she has, um, potentially she will pick you out if you pop a smoke screen before your sonar will pick her out. So, uh, IK Saxman playing the very much correct thing to do in the destroy in this kind of game, pushing forward and getting into the cap, uh, playing his flank. Now this obviously means that he's assisting his team on this flank by getting a bit of spotting done, although uh, the friendly cruiser is also flexed up, so potentially the friendly Nuremberg is I'm already seeing the kind of situation he's getting himself into, and he's going to be losing a lot of HP. Although asking him to get back is probably the correct thing the Nuremberg should do, it's probably too little too late for the Nuremberg, he's kind of flexed up and uh, yeah, he won't be long for this world. Now it's interesting to note that IK Saxman is running Twist and Track, uh, I also call it RDF, also known as Radio Direction Finder. Uh, this basically tells you the location of the nearest enemy ship. Now it will tell the enemy ship that it is located, um, so they will have some kind of indication that you're about. There goes the uh, friendly Nuremberg, um, doing what Nuremberg's do, I guess you could say. So, um, Although Sax hasn't imparted his actual command ability to me, he's imparted that he's taken uh, Eric Bay, level 16, legendary 4, with the inspiration of Switchkin and Sims. But knowing Sax, having played with Sax for a good while now, I'm probably going to take a good stab in the dark and say that his uh, commander traits are going to be exactly the same as me. A contact is imminent, look at me now, twist and track, smoke on the water, and unstoppable. Also, his modules, I have seen them, aiming systems module 1, propulsion module 2, and concealment module 1. So, a very concealment-focused uh, commander build, which is going to be very good with the Z35, because she does have the joint best detectability in comparison to the tech tree uh, destroyers. Uh, therefore, it's almost like a really super concealed ship with a really great capability of guns, HP, and especially that sonar. So having capped C, he's now making a move over into the Bravo objective. There's the Legaz in there. She could potentially be a problem. We've already got one volley of torps out and we're getting a second one now. Looks like she's going around the corner. So an opportunity to get a sneaky shot on the Legaz now without being detected. Always a nice little trick. Always worth getting that little bit of extra damage while you can without sacrificing any of your... Uh, well, well getting all, giving away your position to the enemy. I guess they kind of know you're there, but it's not on the mini-map, so not everyone's going to be paying attention, and it means you're not going to get shot at as well. So having discussed his uh, ship modules and command build, you can always refer to them. They're down in the description for future reference. And it looks like his capping Bravo cap, as the has actually vacated, so we could be looking at our second solo cap of the game. Now, regarding the Z-35, uh, we've already discussed this in the review, but she was a member of the 1936 B class of destroyers, of which five were laid down, but only three were completed. Of the three completed, Z-35, Z-36 and Z-43, all of them actually ran into mines during the Second World War. So all uh, three of these ships were issued to the 6th Destroyer Flotilla, which was based in the Baltic in 1944, and... Um, or as they came into service, I should really say. And they basically partook in convoy escorts, uh, shore bombardment services, uh, working alongside some of the German heavy cruisers, and also mine laying activities. Now, it's quite funny mentioning in this game that uh, she, the Z-35 has a very aggressive sonar where it can detect ships at 5 kilometers range. But it's also rather amusing to consider that the Z-35, the Z-36, and the Z-43 all ran into mines, admittedly. Uh, during mine lane operations, Z-35 and Z-36 actually ended up running into a friendly minefield during a, a heavy seas, I guess you could say, and um, they both sunk. Uh, Z-36 went down with all hands very quickly, while Z-35 went down a bit slower, 
and uh, ended up with 70 of her crew surviving and being captured by the Soviet Navy. So here's an interesting tactic. He can see the Benson. Benson can't see him. Now we know the sonar range is five kilometers, so we're gonna close in, get ourselves to that perfect number. There you go, there's five kilometers. So we're gonna loose off some torpedoes, very nice. Cutting off the exit of the ZV, uh, the Benson, I should say. Pop in our smoke screen. So now we're not detected. Pop in on our sonar. Now we can see the Benson from the safety of our smoke screen. Look at her engines, so she's not gonna be going anywhere. However, if she, if Sax doesn't finish her with his guns, he should be able to finish her with the torpedoes which are inbound. Furthermore, looks like the enemy New Mexico is gonna be gobbling up some torpedoes. He does actually finish the Benson with a torpedo, and he does get another torpedo hit and flooding on the New Mexico. I think he also knocks her engines out, and I think that's one of the main reasons why she damaged guns. So for about a good 20 seconds or so, it will take, depending on commander traits and inspirations. Um, he's going to be uh, almost just trying to get HE penetrations, but it won't be long until he starts setting fires as the damage control party um, goes back onto cooldown. So, of the other two members of the Z-35 class, the Z-44 and the Z-45, Z-44 was actually launched, uh, however, during fitting out, she was heavily damaged by the Royal Air Force, and Z-45 never was launched and ended up being scrapped on the slipways after the Second World War. Z-44, they did contemplate repairing her, however, they decided it wasn't really worthwhile because they started to actually cannibalize her for parts to repair other German destroyers. In fact, the Z-39 is one of those destroyers, ironically, which is also another German premium destroyer in the game at tier 6. Firing torpedoes out on the other New Mexico, which is the New Mexico that potentially bothered us over at the Charlie objective, so that's, that New Mexico is not doing too badly considering the top speed of the New Mexico. The, uh, the other New Mexico, which he did get some torpedoes in earlier, was uh, blapped out of existence by a friendly Normandy. And it looks like this enemy New Mexico is doing the same speed ahead and eats up six torpedoes. Devastating strike and kill number two. Very nice. So while our torpedoes are reloading and we're getting our third solo cap of the game, we note the enemy California closing in. This is a perfect destroy ambush. Uh, California is quite slow, so she's not going to be racing around the corner. Now, although the torpedo damage individually from the Z-35 is actually quite low, if you can get enough fish to hit the target, it's obviously going to go down. Now, the California is known for having quite a, a very good torpedo bulge or torpedo damage reduction. However, uh, if you get enough on the target, she's gonna obviously going to go down. So here, relying on the spotting from the MF friendly battleship, and almost just waiting our time, our torpedoes are nearly finished reloading. However, we lose the spot on the California, which is a bit, <sighs> a bit of a shame. However, we can get that spot again. This would be quite advantageous. Oh, there we go. Otherwise, we're going to have to get the spot ourselves and actually give away our position to the California. There's the California again. And that looks almost perfect. So if we can fire off these torpedoes, put it into full speed ahead, and make sure the California does not get well, does not detect us. Obviously, we want to stay more than two kilometers away from her because we don't want to get auto detected. And remember that the way detection works is from basically the highest armored point to the highest armored point. In this case, it would be the bridge of the Z-35 to the bridge of the California, and those two never lined up around the corner of the island, so he's able to get a hell of a lot of torpedo hits and get himself a second ever strike. Now, here, he just about misses out on a double strike on that Queen Elizabeth, which is a bit of a shame, but he's able to mop her up and get himself kill number four. So, in this situation... The points are obviously in Saxman's team's favour, however the number of ships left on each team is pretty even. Um, obviously Saxman's team retaining more battleships is slightly advantageous in comparison to the enemy team uh, retaining a majority of cruisers. So it should just be a case of closing in and defending B and almost seeing what's what. 
The enemy York is definitely the cruiser to watch because she's the one with the aggressive long range sonar. You don't want to be accidentally getting too close to her and allowing her to take advantage of you. However, it's almost worth mentioning that Sax has managed to play most of the game without being detected or if he has been detected, not being fired upon. Which is a very advantageous way to play. Here he's finally spotted for sure. And the York is firing on him for the first time this game. Down, uh, Sax is actually coming to fire. We're running clean, knocking his engines out, but I assume that he's running um, unstoppable. There you go, confirmed. So he's able to keep his speed up. Now, unstoppable does improve the reload time of your damage control party. However, when you consider that keep, unstoppable also keeps your engine model running even after critical damage, um, it does mean that you can keep moving. Now here the York is detecting with that aggressive sonar that we have mentioned, however there's an island between Sax and the York which is probably his saving grace. <clears throat> also the York's probably going to find himself in a rather bit of a pickle I guess you could say with the enemy battleships. And worth noting the enemy cruiser on Sax's starboard side and that's where we started firing him, damage gone in that fire. Getting a torpedo hit, flooding and flooding out the York, getting himself a Kraken. Only Pensacola has got a line of sight on him, but that's dropping off now. And so we're in a bit of a situation now where we managed to drop off the detectability, which is quite nice. With that Pensacola there, she's pretty much going to have to press into detectability range of YouTube. So now you, however, friendly me Mexico, blaps the uh, Pensacola out of existence, and that just leaves the enemy Bayern. So, how are we going to finish this game? We've still got uh, a reasonable amount of time to actually probably get the kill. Now, Sax is probably contemplating two options here. He could go for the cap option, I guess you could say. He could push through, you know, get behind the buy and grab the cap. Or the other alternative is potentially to set up an ambush for the buy and Considering we've got sub three minutes left, I can see the ambush on the buy and being a, a legitimate play. Um, because the chances are that if you go for the cap, you might not be able to cap it in time. And if you do, that's pretty much going to be the end of your game anyway. And looking at the way that his team's racking up points, I don't even think he's going to have the full two minutes that are actually left of the game to really push it through. So he might not even be able to get the cap or get there in time. There's the biome. She's 6.8 kilometers away as of last noting. I guess he does have twists and tracks so he can keep track of the biome as she comes around the corner of the island. So he's going to be aware of which direction she's travelling, which, which side of the island she's going to come around. Probably going to come around this side of the island. Now we're closing that distance to the Bayern, turning on our sonar, which obviously does have that 5 kilometer range, and there she is at 4.7 and closing. So, um, yep, yeah, that sonar being very useful again. Torpedoes away, seeing she's going to stay in a straight line. You've got two options here, you can pop a smoke and go nice and quiet, or you can go uh, Guts of Glory because you... Basically, you're going to cap out on points very soon, so uh, opening fire, <laughs> trading a bit of HP, guts or glory. But those torpedoes look like they're running straight and true, and how many hits are we going to get? Four torpedo hits, getting confederate, and kill number six, I believe. Well, wow, very good game from Sax, and I believe he used it for his Z35 review. So uh, let's go to the end screen and see what his scores were. So here we are at the end screen and he's managed to do 175,000 damage from 102 hits on target with his main battery causing 4 fires along with 19 torpedo hits of which 11 caused flooding securing himself 6 kills, 3 devastating strikes, confederate, high caliber and kraken unleashed so uh, I think Sax would be very pleased with the outcome of this game I have to confess very good destroying game uh, showcasing some of the good traits of playing a hybrid crew, uh, destroyer I should say and also um, taking advantage of the situation that presented itself, especially knowing the abilities of the destroyer that he's in and the abilities of the destroyers and ships on the enemy team. Going on to the team screen, and it's quite obvious Sax came top of his team. Uh, in this case, it's 2,000 ship XP more than the next best player on his team. So Sax definitely put in his effort and got the reward at the end of the day. Going on to the economy screen, he's managed to walk away with a total profit of 740,000 credits. That is with a common credit booster and a premium account. Uh, obviously ship service cost in this case was 79,000 credits, obviously because the tier 6 uh, premium does have a slightly reduced ship service cost. Well, all in all, a 
brilliant game from Stacks, and I'm sure he was very pleased with the outcome of that one. If you did enjoy this, feel free to give it a thumbs up, and if you have any of your own game captures you'd like to share, then the email address for the channel is down in the description. Now, also down in the description is the command build and modules used by Sax during this gameplay, along with the link to Patreon if you want to support the channel on Patreon, as it is a non-monetized channel. If you want to check out some of Sax's own content, then his channel will be linked on the end screen, and until next time, I'm the Gareth Major, and back to the port. Hey, hey, clear the way, here comes the galloping major. Bumpety, 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 bump. Get out of the way there, you fellows. Unless you want me to run you down, I guess this is the life. Now, hey, hey, clear the way, here comes the galloping major.